talk about now are some general um, treatment principles. So as I described earlier, we have several um, heads on the hand pieces. The one that we use probably 90% of the time is the large uh, contact head. What the contact head does is give you much better penetration of the light into the tissue. Anytime you're in the non-contact position, you're going to have about 60% more light reflected than when you're in the contact position. You're also going to be deforming the tissues, blanching the tissues, so you get deeper penetration. And you get a myofascial trigger point release, so sort of a massaging technique as well. So whenever you possibly can, use the contact head. You use the large contact head for above 6 watts. You use a small contact head for 5.9 watts or lower. Um, the method of applying this is to move it at 1 to 3 inches per second. I like it closer to 1 inch per second. I like to have a finger touching the tissue that I'm treating. I call that the trailing uh, finger method. So I'm checking in to see how warm the tissue is getting all the time. If I'm in a non-contact mode with my non-contact head, I still want to move it 1 to 3 inches per second, but now I want to be above the tissue 1 to 3 inches, and again, 1 inch is better than 3 inches, so you get better uh, physics if you're closer to the tissue than if you're farther. Why would you want to move 3 inches instead of 1? Say that you had that dark skin, dark haired animal and was feeling a little too warm, then you can just move the probe a little bit faster and that will allow the tissue to um, cool down or stay cooler. Okay. You can use the contact head slightly off contact, you know, one or two millimeters away. Maybe sometimes when I'm first starting to treat an animal, I will sort of hover over the skin, but then I want to go into contact. If I'm taking any distance away, I'll find that that beam is collimated and will actually get too hot on the skin. So again, when you have the contact head, you, you want to be in contact 99% of the time. Okay, and then let me just show you how, sorry, after I put that back, let me show you how you change the head. So treat these like uh, camera lenses, which means just to keep them relatively clean and safe and away from danger. When I'm taking this off, if I do it over the holder, that's a soft surface if I drop it. Um, put your lens cap back into that space so hair and dust does not collect, and then spin on your next um, handpiece. When you have this, you know, I try not to wave it around at the ceiling of people's faces. Just always have it pointing down and away from people's eyes. Whether it's on or not, I think that's a good habit um, to get into. Um, if you happen to need to clean the lens or the laser, you can take these caps off. You can vacuum this and you can also use a 4x4 with a little uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean the inside of those. If you get hair or dust in there and that laser light stays on that uh, organic material, it can start to get it too hot and make it smell. So sometimes after a month or two, you'll start to see stuff accumulate in there. And if that does, you need to clean it out with a little um, alcohol on a 4x4. And you can also use that same method on the uh, fiber or the handpiece or any of these other components um, to keep that uh, clean and in good shape. The uh, ports, um, you can vacuum. I think I mentioned that before as far as keeping those um, clean as well. So uh, the other thing I want to say is when we're um, applying the laser therapy, we always want to be moving in a grid-like pattern. So it's a little more difficult, say, on my forearm because you want to move this way. When you're moving across like this, it's a little more extra motion to do that. And let me just show you with the uh, hand piece how that would look. So. Let's take off this small attachment again, put the large attachment back on. Um, and the reason I'm trying to show you this is I want to show you the principle of staying perpendicular to the tissue, okay? So when I'm going uh, lengthwise, it's relatively easy to see how I can remain perpendicular, how I should remain perpendicular to the tissue. However, when I start my grid-like pattern in this direction, I need to be moving the handle quite a bit to keep it perpendicular to the tissue. Again, the physics of the light getting into the tissue are based on it contacting, uh, the light contacting the tissue in a perpendicular fashion. So, again, if you can go 50-50, that's great. I'd probably go two-thirds longitudinally on a long um, area like this and one-third in that horizontal method. When you're doing the back or, say, on my thigh, that type of area would um, be a lot easier to do a very symmetrical grid-like pattern. So whenever you're doing the backs or the hips of dogs, again, it's a little bit easier to do that. 
but you do want to follow a grid-like pattern, no circles, no figure eights, uh, no zigzags, and that way you get consistent um, application of the laser light, whether one technician or one doctor or another person is um, applying the laser therapy. So it is important to have that um, done consistently in that pattern, at that speed, at that distance, and to follow the uh, protocols and dosing that the uh, laser gives you in most instances unless the doctor wants to change um, the dosages that are suggested by um, the laser. Okay, I think that uh, covers our general treatment principles. To recap, we want to move the laser at one to three inches per second. We want to stay one to three inches away from the tissue. We want to move the laser in a grid-like pattern, not a circle or a figure eight or any other uh, geometrical shape. We want to have a trailing finger on the tissue if possible to get a sense of what the temperature is and that's more important with the higher uh, energies and higher settings. And uh, I think that covers the uh, treatment principles. Okay. okay, we're going to talk about general therapy principles. So one thing I make everybody do is hold your hand like this and say what are the three things the laser does. It decreases pain, it decreases inflammation, and it increases healing. A lot of times we get confused or excited, we have so much information that we can't really bring to bear, uh, you know, what is a quick summary of what the laser does. Decreases pain, decreases inflammation, increases healing. Two down, one up, two down, one up, okay? So just think of that anytime you're stuck for an idea of what um, the laser does. So that makes it applicable to a lot of the things that are coming into your clinic, you know. Almost anything that is painful, swollen, or not healing will qualify as a possible candidate for laser therapy. So one of the things uh, it's important to remember is that um, if we're not used to having the laser in our clinic, it might be a good idea to suggest to the doctor or to the other staff that, hey, is this a case we want to use laser therapy on? Because um, sometimes it's just a question of remembering that we have the laser and we want to start incorporating it into um, our different treatment uh, protocols. The laser is going to do most of the calculation of the dosing um, for the treatments, but we treat three basic conditions, post-procedure, acute, and chronic. Post-procedure, easy, one or two treatments the day of and the day after, they never get treated again, less self-mutilation, less licking, the wounds heal faster and they look older than they are. Um, acute conditions, they get treated three to six times, so acute otitis, an abscess, a bite, um, acute anal saculitis, maybe daily or maybe every other day until the condition resolves and then they don't need to be treated again. Chronic conditions are a little bit trickier. They get treated six to twelve times, usually every other day or three times a week, until you reach a plateau effect. So these are all of your arthritis dogs, your hip dysplasia dogs, degenerative joint disease. And once they have um, gone through that induction period of 6 to 12 treatments, then they go through a transition period of one treatment per week, then a maintenance period of once per month. So uh, again, I tend to under-promise and over-deliver. If you think the dog is going to take 6 or 8 treatments, you know, you might suggest it's going to take 8 or 10 or 12, and then if it's less, um, you're sort of a hero and you're accurate. If it's more, nobody's really happy about that. So I tell most people with chronic conditions, six to twelve treatments will be very lucky if it's six um, it's more likely to be closer to the twelve but in truth what happens is if those conditions are mild moderate or severe you know mild conditions will be closer to six moderate closer to eight severe closer to twelve it also has to do with are you on other medications or treatments at the same time so if you're taking an anti-inflammatory or tramadol or gabapen probably will need less laser therapy to achieve a good result and if you have a patient that can't be on any medications for whatever reason, either the owner won't let it be on any medications or can't afford it, or the animal's kidneys are in bad shape, so it can be on a very limited number of pharmaceuticals. So again, that is where more of the art of the medicine comes in, is the doctor needs to prescribe that series of treatments. Each individual dose will be calculated by um, the laser itself. But it's a good idea to have an intuitive um, sense of what is the dosing. Okay, and so we, we treat two basic conditions, superficial and deep. Our superficial conditions get about 4 joules per square centimeter, and our deep conditions get about 10 joules per square centimeter. A joule is approximately 4 calories, it's just a unit of energy, and you'll get used to the term just like milligrams per pound uh, once you've used the laser for, let's say, a month. Um, so the 
the conditions, all of the conditions sort of fall into those two categories. So whether you're treating a fracture or arthritis, those are both deep conditions and they're both going to be around 10 joules per square centimeter. But if you want to have a rough idea of how many joules that should take, um, a 3 by 5 card, which is about the size of my hand, is about 100 square centimeters, okay? And um, if we're doing a deep condition, 10 joules per square centimeter means about 1,000 joules per handful. So if I do my knee, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 4,000 to 5,000 joules is about what my knee would take because it's a deep structure getting 10 joules per square centimeter and it's about four handfuls or about 400 square centimeter um, area to treat. If I was treating a wound on my leg that was the size of my hand, then that would only be four joules per square centimeter. So that would be four times 100, be 400 joules. So when I'm calculating the dosages, when my laser calculates the dose, you should have a rough idea. You know, is that dog's hip around 3,000 joules? Is that wound on the skin around 200 joules? Does that make sense? It should make sense to you, and um, you should sort of be double checking what the um, dosage is that uh, the laser is actually coming up for you um, to treat with. Uh, let me just see here. So um, the most common things that you're going to find um, that you treat in the clinic are going to be musculoskeletal conditions like uh, arthritis or DJD, um, injuries to the joints or to the bones, uh, dermatologic conditions, otitis and lick granulomas and uh, hot spots, very common. Post-surgical wounds, so you should be treating all of your surgeries interoperatively and post-operatively. You'll get um, stronger, better uh, wound healing as well as less uh, pain and swelling associated with those wounds. Um, and then some of the things that are a little more uh, unusual to treat would be some of these inflammatory conditions like cystitis or inflammatory bowel disease or um, um, pancreatitis. All of those will respond. But um, those are probably relatively new and uh, relatively cutting-edge type of treatments as far as the laser therapy goes. So I think that covers my uh, general uh, treatment uh, protocols and therapies, and uh, we'll take another break. All right, here we go. We're going to show you how we uh, wrap up the laser, and um, what I'm going to do is flip the switch at the back of the laser. A lot of times what I try to do is take it back to the home screen just so it's consistent each time, turn the laser off. And I'm going to show you the fiber wrapping technique. So as the cord comes out of the laser, you just want to follow its natural path, not bend it too tightly. And you want to loop the fiber around the holding mechanism here, just in an oval pattern. And, you know, snug, but not terribly tight. And what happens here is on the last lap, we switch to a figure eight. And we put it back into the handpiece. So that is how the laser should be stored when it goes in the box. We disconnect it and we drop it into its pre-cut space here in the box. And then this little uh, foam core goes on the top to keep it from bouncing against the top of the case. Um, what I'll do is pull the cord out of the wall. And this is a little counterintuitive, but it's better if you put the cord in first, even though the space is not cut out to fit the cord. That goes in nice and low. And then take the transformer and drop that in on top so you don't have to squish it down quite as far as you would if you put this in the bottom. Okay. And then next what I do is put my uh, treatment heads away. It should close up. Zip her up. Drop that into the square. And then I'm going to put my glasses in here. And again, depending on where you're going and what you're doing, um, Typically when I'm mobile, I will keep fewer uh, than the four pairs of glasses in here. But um, just to show you that everything fits, um, I'm going to put the three glasses in there. I'll put the fourth pair on top of the laser. Now if I want to put my goggles in, I can either remove a pair of glasses or I can sort of squish those in there. So again, what I do most of the time if I'm going out to treat an animal in somebody's home is I'll go with three pairs of glasses and then I'll stick my uh, goggles into the uh, laser in a couple places and this all closes down nice and snugly and I can take everything that I need. Maybe if I want to take my extra one, I'll uh, load that on. And then again, a comfy cone or something like that extra with you um, is fine to load in as well if you need an alternative um, sense of protection. So again, the case, once it's ready to go, the handle comes up, it rolls on wheels, 
It's uh, airline safe if you need to go on an airline or in a vehicle. So that is the uh, packaging up with the laser. Okay, here we go with a quick introduction to your uh, laser liaison um, app and marketing program. So on the laser liaison app, you have uh, basically four tabs that you can go into. The five minute consult is the fastest way to get in to show your client something quick. So you can watch the intro video or you can go to the laser presentation. The intro video is several people talking about their experiences with laser therapy. The laser presentation is about an 18 slide presentation that explains how lasers work. I go back, um, I can go to my patient photo journal, and in here you can see I can enter a new patient, I can search for a patient, or I can back up records. Um, let's go back to home. Client materials, in here we have a little bit more building on top of the uh, five minute consult. So in the video section there's several videos of newscast um, programs, uh, anatomy animations just like the like, like we showed you on the screen of the CTS uh, photographs in here that um, can show treatments, diagrams, before and afters of certain cases, so that's a pretty handy area to go to. Um, the presentation that you saw in the five minute video is on here, and you'll see it takes a minute or so, not a minute, but several seconds to load up because there's a fair number of slides on there. Um, once it does, I'll scroll through a few 14 slides, so once it's loaded, Again, I can scroll through. Mostly this is just a question of exploring and uh, understanding where things are. I hit done to get out. Um, and then again, in the news, several more videos that you can look at here about um, in the news. So back, my favorite section um, at the home is going to be the staff materials. So in staff materials, you get an introduction to the laser liaison. And this is the, really the place to start, guide you through the whole marketing program and the uses of the um, laser liaison back uh, resources. So here are several treatment guides and therapy protocols and uh, videos. So I really like that section. Um, business is return on investment calculators. Anatomy animations, again, another way to get to those, same as what we have on the laser itself. Photographs, the same as in the um, client section. Uh, web links is a pretty handy place if you want to go to training, so for companion um, clinician's corner, light cure, aim law, um, and then also the uh, pain scale link at Colorado is on that section. And then in the training section, there's a lot of in-depth um, training here, so we have a much longer presentation, it's on the order of 60 slides, I think, the training video and the medical animation, so I find that uh, medical animation is really helpful and also the training videos. There's several different aspects here, all the stuff that I'm telling you now or that you get during your installation, a lot of those can be looked up again on the iPad in this section. And then let's not forget the use of the iPad as far as um, taking pictures and using it as a camera. So as we showed you earlier, you can take um, still photographs and movies of all of your patients, record those, send them to them, you can email them. Let's go look under our photo section. So there's our kitty cat with her goggles on. I'm try to bring it back. There's our kitty cat with doggles, and you know, nice people like that, the dog. So again, clients really like this aspect of recording um, the treatment before and after. You can do wounds before and after, and then you can use this in other parts of your practice for dentistries, you know, stuff you sutured together, so on and so forth. So take advantage of the laser liaison to continue, tr continue to train, the uh, clinician's corner, the AIMLA training, uh, and also your local representative. Okay, that's it. All right, here we go. So this is a little uh, summary and uh, recall of what we've already been through in the training. I want to go over a couple of points first. One, um, as far as the cable goes, you can keep it wound up on the tray, but typically I have it unwound all the way. The way the cable is wound here, that is approximately the uh, maximum bending radius of the cable. So remember, this is a fiber optic um, cable, and you could break the fibers if you really crush that at a acute angle. So again, this bending radius that wraps around the uh, holder is about the maximum that you want to bend um, the cable at. I also want to talk a little bit about the patient tracker if you have that um, function on your computer. So I'm just going to look up a patient on here. I'm going to look up all of my patients and I'm going to bring one of my patients up here because uh, one thing that we didn't talk about, let's look at the uh, treatment view here. Uh, one of the things we didn't talk about was how to get the records onto a USB drive. So what happens is you plug the uh, thumb drive into the back of the laser and then um, when you're looking at the record, if you want to export it, you can hit this print records button. So it's a little counterintuitive that 
exporting the record, we hit print record, and then we have a choice of, choice of print a general report or print a detailed report. So again, you can choose which one you want, and what's going to happen is it tells you that it's successfully exported your record, then you can unplug your USB and take it to your medical record system and download that um, PDF file into your computer. So uh, again, some people want to know how to export the record. Uh, from there and you hit the print button once you have the USB plugged into the back of the computer and that will do it for you. Uh, so uh, again, let's just talk about uh, quickly the um, summary of what we want to do when we're treating. So remember we're moving at one to three inches per second. When we're in non-contact, we're one to three inches away. We're moving in a grid-like pattern, so we're getting even distribution um, of the laser light. We're keeping the probe head perpendicular to the tissue at all times. That, again, goes with the physics a little bit more. We're trying to treat the joint from 360 degrees around whenever possible. Um, of course, when you're doing the back, you can't really get from 360 degrees. So on a back, concentrate on 270 degrees. But again, trying to get it from all um, different angles. You want to take the joint or the uh, anatomy through a range of motion, so try to have it in at least two different positions during the treatment. If you can get into more than two different positions, um, that's great. And try to use the um, contact head whenever possible. So when you cannot see the lesion you're treating, if it's a deep lesion, use the contact head. You'll get 60% less reflection of the light. You'll get more effective uh, treatment and dosing of the tissue um, if you do that. So those are the main treatment um, principles. Remember with your iPad um, to use all three functions on the iPad, the laser liaison, just explore through there. I use mostly um, the staff uh, tab on there, the staff training tab, and then um, also use the iBooks and then the uh, iPhoto and the uh, camera function on the iPad as well. So that is a quick uh, little finish up and summary of what uh, the laser does. You should have all these things explained more fully in the earlier videos. but. Those are the take-home messages, so thank you again.